In today's video, we'll be looking at Georg Cantor's diagonal proof. Georg Cantor was the father of set theory. He pretty much invented set theory, and one of his most famous proofs was the diagonal proof, in which he proved that there are different kinds of infinities. But before we get into the proof, there's some things that we have to know. So first off, a set is countable if it has a finite number of elements. Now this seems simple enough if I have the set S and it contains 1, 2, and 3. Then the number of elements in S is 3 and it is clearly countable. But the second, the second uh, definition is called the axiom of infinity. And it might be somewhat tricky to grasp, but it basically states a set is countably infinite if there exists a one-to-one -one correspondence between each element of the set and each element of the naturals. So by this definition, the naturals are countably infinite. We can derive that. We have that one as a corresponds to 1, 2 corresponds to 2, 3 corresponds to 3, 4 to 4, and so on. And therefore, the natural numbers are countably infinite. And before we go on for the main proof, let's look at a few more things. Another thing that this shows is that there are as many even numbers as there are actual numbers. And the way we can do this is by simply setting up this correspondence. This is the set of natural numbers and this is the set of even numbers. So 1 will correspond to 2, 2 corresponds to 4, 3 corresponds to 6, 4 corresponds to 8, 5 corresponds to 10, and so on. And by that definition, again, E is countably infinite. And so far everything seems good, all right? We have a definition, we're sticking to it, there's no problems. But then your Cantor actually proved that the set of reals, the cardinality of the reals, the, the number of elements of the real numbers is greater than the number of elements in the natural numbers. And the way he did this was quite brilliant. So let's say that there exists a correspondence between the naturals and the reals. We don't know what it is. So let's say that these are the natural numbers and these are the real numbers. And just to simplify things, we'll be considering the natural numbers only from 0 to 1. And the reason for this is, if you can't even correspond the natural numbers to the reals in the interval 0 to 1, how are you going to correspond them? In the interval 0 to infinity, right? So let's go on with the proof. So for n as 1, we have some number 0 point d11, d12, d13, d14, and so on and so forth. There is an infinite number of decimal places. For n as 2, we have d21, d22, d23, d24, and again so on. And the same thing follows for 3. So let's proceed. So we have 4, 5, 6, and so on and so forth. And I'm not going to write all this stuff again. So let's just keep it like this. So what we're going to try and do is we're going to construct a number which is inherently different from all the numbers we've listed in the reals and not just these remember we're going to list all the reals in the interval 0 to 1 so let's say this new number is m so i have the first digit of m after 0 i say it will be d11 plus 1 and the second digit will be d22 plus 1. The third digit, d33 plus 1. And I hope you can see where this is starting to head now. 
basically we have a diagonal like this and now basically the proof is pretty much complete all we have to do now is realize that m is different from the first number on this list because the first digits don't match it's different from the second number because the second digits don't match different from the third because the third digits don't match and so on and so forth and thus we have created a number which is different from all of these numbers in this list even if there were to exist any and we have shown that this list does not contain this number therefore r the cardinality of r is greater than the cardinality of n and r is a set which we call uncountably infinite thanks for watching this video have a great day